Hey, this is Class Creatives, and in this video we'll discuss how The Last of Us's latest installment in the hit television series uses state-of-the-art workflows, practical and CGI visual effects software such as Autodesk Maya, ZBrush, and Houdini to produce the award-winning live-action episodes. Many of our students are curious about the software and techniques that were used to bring the visually stunning characters to life throughout each segment in the storyline. We'll take a look at how The Last of Us franchise has evolved over the years, going from a groundbreaking AAA game from Naughty Dog Studios to one of the most anticipated live-action video game adaptations to date. In this video, we'll discuss how these award-winning visual effects are made by some of the best studios in the world, paired with state-of-the-art tools such as integrating 3D assets with practical costumes to enhance the unique post-apocalyptic world, how characters are physically transformed on screen with prosthetics, the critical design choices necessary to adapt the critically acclaimed video game characters to the TV show, and how all of the elements are assembled together to create a genuine adaptation to the original source material. Digital matte paintings were necessary to extend or replace backgrounds to create the post-apocalyptic world, to keep the theming with the look of poorly maintained and overrun cities matching that of the PlayStation video game classic series. They had to find a balance between trying to get the vibe of the game, which was much more lush and vibrant, and try to combine that with new aesthetics for the show with a twist of the autumn season. The show takes place over a year, so if you watch carefully, you'll even see a transformation of the environments from fall to spring. It's a me. Mario. Digital map paintings were used extensively to weather and age locations on set. They also helped plate extensions and integration. For the balustrade deck, they needed a full blue screen set to recreate the key shots from the game. The real world location needed to evoke the same feeling as the game. This was one of the few moments in the show that was pretty much a one-to-one -one recreation from the game. Buildings needed to look abandoned while infrastructures weather-worn, corroded, and deteriorated. Hero buildings needed fully built interior structures. Buildings needed to be effects compatible match real-world locations, and convey 20 years of decay and weathering. Plants needed to look like they were reclaiming what was theirs along with modern-day signage removal from the shoots. Bridges had to look unusable. Nearly every shot needed to be adjusted to give the look of an unusable and abandoned world. Speed tree and mega scans were used for 3D plant assets. The artist needed to make sure that the extra elements added were not overly distracting. Digital tree simulation was created in Houdini to add wind for added realism. Drone photogrammetry of the legislature building in Edmonton, Alberta was used to build a digital asset. They adjusted the dome to match the iconic gold Massachusetts State House. Digital doubles were created for the main actors, particularly for the quarantine zone escape sequence. The shots needed to match the live action cinematography. Practical effects, along with prosthetics, were the preference from the show's directors for aesthetic and technical reasons. However, even with all of their planning, digital effects were still necessary to bring the show to life. A location in Canada was chosen known for its prolific snowfall. However, when the team arrived, there was very little snow. Real snow was brought to the set and 350 dump trucks. Additional digital snow and dirt was necessary to complete the color graded final shots seen in the show. To recreate the iconic giraffe scene, the environment needed to stay consistent with the overall aesthetic of a decaying world, but also serve as a natural habitat for the giraffes. Stitched captured drone footage was used to assemble a high resolution panoramic image, which would serve as the basis for the environment. Existing buildings were redressed with weathering and partial destruction, as well as plant overgrowth, mixing procedural and projection techniques. A combination of CGI and 2D projected buildings were used to populate the iconic scene. Inspired by the scoreboard scene in the game, the artists expanded on the idea and built a little league baseball field for the backdrop. Digital assets such as benches, bins, grasses, flowers, and shrubs were manually placed as well as distributed procedurally. Puddles and trees were simulated to give additional ambient motion to the park. A real giraffe was used for the establishing shot which was shot at the zoo with a blue screen. In order to direct the action, the giraffes needed to also be CG. In the scene where Ellie shoots the horse, a computer horse and a real one were used to achieve the visual effect of the animal falling and having its legs positioned in a convincing manner visually. <laughs> 
To create the visual effects of the infected, Barry Gower and his team of effects workers created several prosthetics for the infected characters. Using concept artwork from the game, they made prosthetics for the various stages of the infected characters. The cul-de-sac sequence would require 60 characters in prosthetic suits and makeup. Since the prosthetics were made of silicone, the actors needed to remove and replace the costumes each day of the shoots, making sure the paint and applications matched those of the previous day. In order to create a horde effect, a digital asset was created so that different variations could be made to populate the scene. Motion capture was used for the crowd motion, a mix of live action, motion capture, keyframe animation, and what is crowd simulation tool Massive was used to bring the horde to life. For the battle sequence, a burning building was the main light source as hordes of infected poured out of a giant sinkhole. A huge challenge was compositing the additional CGI infected in between the live action actors. The fire lighting was driven by simulations to enhance the practical fires captured in camera. The final shot in the sequence was entirely CG. The artist strategically placed car lights and small fires for the infected to run through to enhance the visuals. The clicker prosthetics were designed to fit over the actor's head, but the effects team had to ensure that they did not appear like helmets. The child clicker, due to proportions, had to be recreated digitally. Her proportions were adjusted to convey the fact that she was a child in the sequence. In a second episode with the Bostonian Museum, the art department and visual effects team created a practical set that used very little visual effects for the final set piece. Similar to the practical effects used in HBO's Chernobyl's Burn Victims, the infected had various stages of infection shown throughout the show as it progressed from human to clicker, and also for the bloater. It would take the team three to four months developing all of the different stages for the infected. They kept in mind the way the infected was taking hold of the host and their design choices, suggesting how the cordyceps were infecting the human body and channeling into the brain to infect the host. Quick pause to tell you a little bit about Class Creatives. We'll help you take your 3D and 2D art to the next level. Learn from industry professionals with experience teaching at accredited universities. Land that new job, receive higher pay, and stand out from the competition. The great thing about Class Creatives is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. Get started today for free with the link in the description. They used the full bodysuit for the bloater. They also referenced artwork from the game and a real-life MMA fighter to help them create the bloater's unique appearance. The animators paid special attention to the bloater's fungal crown, skin, and hair as well as its movements. They also used a variety of techniques to make the bloater look photorealistic such as adding light transmission to its skin and cordyceps. This ensured a smooth integration into the backdrop of the burning house. To help break up his silhouette, they added a fuzzy layer of hair. The main materials of him were thick, leathery skin, multiple layers of cordyceps, and exploding pods. To make the creature simulation realistic, they used a stiffness map. This allowed them to control how rigid each part of the creature was. The skin was flexible, allowing for natural movement, while the belly and chest were stiffer, to help emphasize the weight. New story elements were created taking inspiration directly from iconic sequences from the game. The practical bloater suit was hyper realistic, however it was heavy, bouncy, and wobbly, which made it difficult for the actor to move in a convincing manner. So the bloater suit was digitally scanned and recreated using motion capture and keyframe animation for the movements. The ZBrush model was modified from the game design and the digital scan by the effects team to lengthen the legs, slim down the belly, and widen the shoulders for more realism. The head was also altered in the initial design so that both the digital version and the prosthetic suit could not only match but be more realistic for the live action version of the iconic character. Some of the techniques for the practical silicone skin creation were taken from what is techniques used on Gollum to further enhance the hyper realism. It would take nearly 10 weeks to create the final bloater suit from start to finish. When the bloater emerges from the sinkhole, it was necessary to match the CG creature to the onset lighting. The extra detailed bloater model allowed the artist to tweak the lighting to enhance the pivotal key moment of the cinematic event. 
To assist with the tight three-week location shoot schedule, Previs was used to plan the ambush sequence. Animatics were also used for the action sequence to plan the timing and pacing. The animatic was then used to block in the scene in Maya using stage motion capture. The scene utilized virtual cameras in their capture lab to keep the cinematic consistency with the live action shots. Motion capture animation was cleaned up, set dressing was added, and additional virtual camera work was implemented. This allowed the team to get an extremely close resemblance to the previs planning. A similar workflow was used in the alleyway diner scene. A mix of keyframe animation and motion capture combined with the virtual camera system allowed the team to work quickly to block in the scene from the first episode while maintaining a handheld aesthetic. The workflow allowed the team to create a shot that matched the lighting, camera movement, and overall style the director wanted for the critical moments. Unreal Engine was also used for a critical 6 minute section of the show that included 140 shots. Animation was completed in Maya, which was then imported into Unreal Engine for rendering. Technical artists set up scenes with two different lighting setups for the pre and post versions of the shots. Motion capture was used to get the most realistic movement possible, combined with virtual camera sessions for the cinematography. Crowd work was also integrated to complete the shot storytelling elements. Extreme attention to details throughout the show included a close-up shot of a disintegrating and cracking hand. The team was tasked with how the hand gets crushed in the shot, which was initially filmed with an unrealistic rubber foam hand. The practical effects team used a wax mold casting of a hand, which was then painted for a realistic effect. They then applied latex, which once dried created the appearance of peeling and rotting. To replicate the crumbling of bones inside the hand, they used a mixture of baking soda mixed with water, citric acid, and vinegar. The effect gave a very convincing, crumbly, dusty look which was perfect for the shot. The final shot only appears for a few seconds, but serves as an example of the attention to detail the team undertook to convey the realism in the show. Well, that about wraps up this video on how The Last of Us franchise has evolved over the years, with its hit television series and timeless video game installments from Naughty Dog, utilizing state-of-the-art software such as Autodesk Maya, and why it's an important integral piece to the AAA animation game and visual effects creation process. It's an example of an incredible collaboration between one of the best video game studios in the world and the top visual effects studios creating a brand new experience for the Last of Us franchise. The newest entry in the series looks better than ever. Will you be watching on premiere day? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Perfect.